The fabric covered strainer is a textile mounting apparatus consisting of a wooden frame covered in a show fabric onto which a textile object is stitched. This technique is beneficial for delicate textiles where a curved needle cannot be used as the mounting system permits access to the reverse of the mount and therefore a straight needle can be utilized. The materials needed for this project can be found in your course kit. Here you can see the materials laid out and ready for assembly. You will need four strainer bars, a selection of scissors, bone folders, and box cutters, a length of undyed flannel, one hundred percent cotton muslin. We will be using this as our show fabric. Paper honeycomb board. A hammer is useful to secure any staples that did not fully penetrate the strainer. An upholstery stapler with staples. Push pins. and finally, hot melt adhesive. You can also use PVA adhesive if you happen to have it. Begin by assembling your strainer. Insert the slots into the grooves. You can use a hammer to ensure that they are fully secure. Check that the edges are square. You can tack the corners with staples to keep everything in place while you work. The next step is to cover the strainer with your flannel. Start work with the beveled edge of the strainer facing you. Place the flannel on top of the strainer and check the grain. Ensure that the grain is aligned and pin the flannel in place with push pins. You do not need to worry about making, about putting the flannel under tension at this time. Once the grain is aligned, flip the strainer over. We are going to begin creating tension from the reverse side. Flip the strainer over. Begin pulling the flannel using pins to secure as you create tension across the surface of the strainer. Continue pulling and pressing pins into the, into the strainer bars.
This process may take several minutes as the weave structure will continue to expand as you work the fabric. Continue testing the surface of the strainer to, to check the tension. I've sped this up because this process takes quite a while. Here you can see that I'm continuing to pull and moving the pins to the outer edge of the strainer bars in preparation for stapling. Trim away some of the excess flannel. You should leave about an inch in case you need to continue pulling. Begin stapling the flannel. Try to keep the staples towards the middle of the strainer bar. You don't need to worry about making a perfectly straight line at this point since this raw edge will be covered with the show fabric. Continue stapling. I'm using a hammer to just make sure that the staples have fully penetrated the strainer bars. It's important to place staples right next to the corners, but not over them. We are going to use a different treatment on the mitered corners to make sure that the fabric remains perfectly flat. So there you can see the staple right up against the mitered corner. Finishing the flannel corners. We want, you can see that there's a lot of excess fabric here on the corners of the strainer. We want to be able to trim all of this extra fabric away without having it unravel. This is achieved with an adhesive. The adhesive will stabilize the weave structure of the flannel so that it can be cut. I'm using hot glue because I have it on hand. I'm using a very sparing amount to close that corner. So there you can see I've pressed it shut. Use the smallest amount of adhesive possible. You can also use a jade PVA adhesive for this process. You'll have to, you'll have to clamp the fabric shut and let it dry overnight. Once the glue is dry, we are going to trim away this excess fabric.
So here you can see that there is still a little bit of excess fabric on the outer corner. So I've applied a little bit of adhesive so that I can trim it back uh, without that corner unraveling. Here's the completed flannel covering on the strainer. Covering the strainer with the show fabric. The first step is to align the grain of the show fabric on the face of the strainer. Here you can see that I've pinned it very loosely before I turn it to the backside and begin stretching and placing the show fabric under tension. I've left myself quite a bit of extra fabric so that I have room to pull. Once you've found the tension that you need, trim your show fabric and begin folding the raw edge under to create a clean line. You can then begin stapling your show fabric to your strainer. Work to keep this line as neat as possible. Make sure that you staple up to the mitered corner, but not over it. We will be using this excess fabric at the corner to create a clean fold around the edge of the strainer. Continue trimming as needed to create a clean edge. After stretching your show fabric, your strainer should look like this. I am going to show you two methods for finishing the corners of your strainer. The outside corners of your strainer should be clean and tight with the bottom edge folded under. First, I'm going to show you how to finish the corners using a square fold on the back side. I'm working to find the fold and carefully trimming back any excess fabric that I'm not going to need. Be careful not to trim too quickly or trim too much fabric too soon. I'm working to create a fold that is completely parallel to the outside corner of the strainer. Bone spatulas or metal spatulas work well here to create a clean line. Again, this is what we want to achieve, a fold that is completely parallel to the corner of the strainer. Once you've practiced finding your fold, you can begin to secure it. Start by pulling the fabric towards one side of the strainer. A clamp will work well here, as you can see, I'm struggling to keep the strainer upright uh, while I fold. So here you can see I'm pulling it tight, and then I'm placing a staple exactly parallel to that edge.
Now I'm going to begin tucking the fabric under and then creating a fold that is over that staple, completely covering it. I really want the, the, the edge of the fold to be absolutely perfectly parallel and on top of the outside corner of the strainer. So you can see I'm just using my fingers to work the fabric up and over the back side. I'm pinning it in place here while I work from the back to create my fold. Remember, I've used adhesive to stabilize the flannel so, I, so, so that I can trim it back as close as possible and maintain as flat a surface as possible on the back side of the strainer. I just stapled the cut edge down and I'm now folding my material over that raw edge and tucking the edges under to create a clean fold. Once you've found your fold, staple in place. Before stapling that outer edge, I'm going to check to make sure that all of the stray yarns and fabric is tucked underneath. And there's the final staple. Here's a slow motion view of the technique that I'm using to wrap the corners. So I'm pulling the fabric, stapling, I'm just pressing that staple in uh, with, with the hammer just to make sure that it's as flat as possible so I don't have a bump there. Now I'm trimming away my excess. You can see I don't need that little flap that's at the top um, to create my clean fold. It's just going to be bulk, so I'm cutting it away. So now I can find my fold and I'm going to stretch and tuck the fabric and manipulate it into that perfect parallel line. This really does take some practice. You may have to spend quite a bit of time um, playing with the fabric to get it to do what you want. Here I'm going to show the miter method for finishing the corners. The first part of the process is essentially the same. We're going to use a staple to hold the fabric over the corner and then create a nice parallel fold. The difference with this technique is that instead of creating a square fold across the back side, we're going to be creating a diagonal fold that follows the join of the strainer. So here I'm creating my fold over the outer edge. I'm using a bone folder to tuck that fabric inside and get it nice and flat. Once I've found my fold, I can begin working on the back side. I'm using a pin to hold it in place while I create my diagonal line. The steps to create a diagonal fold across the back side of the strainer is also clearly shown in the video I uploaded to Blackboard from YouTube. So there I'm securing the fold and you can see that once I've created my diagonal there's an extra fold there that I can cut away.
One thing I find a little bit difficult about this uh, technique of making a diagonal fold is that you're working on the bias, which can which tends to cause this the fabric to stretch, and it, it can be very difficult to create a perfectly straight line there. So there I'm tucking. Now I don't have the correct angle there, so I'm resetting the fold once more. And there I'm using a bone awl to really tuck all of that underneath tightly. I think I mentioned this in class that um, the bone awl is actually one of my favorite tools, um, both in conservation and in mounting. That little dull point just helps to push that last little bit of fabric to create nice uh, tight corners and joins. So there I found my 45 degree angle. And now I'm ready to staple that corner down, making sure that my staples follow the fold neatly. I wasn't happy with how that second staple went in, and so I'm removing it. This is perfectly fine. If you feel like you need to pull staples out and restaple, that is perfectly acceptable and part of the process. Just make sure you don't tear the fabric when you're pulling the staple out. And there's the corner. You can see that it wraps around parallel to the outside and is tight and clean. I can now work on that last corner. Here's the finished strainer back showing both techniques. Here we have the front of the strainer covered in show fabric. The surface of the strainer should be clean and tight with a good tension that will allow us to stitch our object into the surface. The corners should be tight and clean so that they don't interfere visually when the work is being viewed. We're now going to cut along the lines we just made. I'm adjusting my blade so that I'm penetrating all the layers of the honeycomb except the very bottom. If 
It may take a few passes of your blade to make sure that you've penetrated all the way through. Now I'm using my knife to cut away the interior of the honeycomb, taking care not to penetrate all the way to that inner square. Take care when handling to make sure you don't cut yourself during this process. I've scored all the sides and I can now remove the outer strips from my board, creating a raised area on the inside that's going to sit inside the back of my strainer. Use your blade to scrape any additional bits from the surface of the paper. Your completed backing board should look like this. Check the fit of your backing board before mounting your textile. You may need to trim away additional bits in order to get the backing board to fit snugly. Don't forget to write your name on the back. Your strainer is now ready. Place your textile on top of the strainer surface taking care to align the warp and weft. The structure of your textile, its motifs, its shape and condition are going to determine the stitch pattern that you use. A benefit of using a strainer is the ability to stitch with a straight needle. Because we have access to the reverse of the mounting apparatus, a straight needle can be used with the hands positioned at top and bottom. The strainer can be placed between two tables to permit access to the reverse. You can also try propping the strainer up on books or yoga blocks to create a space for your hands. You can experiment with different positions to find the one that works best for you. Thank you for watching this video and be sure to reach out to Professor Sabo with any questions.